Today we'll talk about combinational logic. In fact, more specifically, we're going to talk about the sum of products and the products of sums. How do we actually take a circuit diagram or a circuit equation or even a truth table and convert it into one or the other? So in this case, let's take a look at combinational logic. In particular, we'll look at the sum of products first. So if you take a look at your screen, we're going to draw a truth table with essentially three inputs. We'll just do A, B, C, and then Q. In this case, we'll just draw 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. The nice thing about this is this order will probably never change because it's just increasing numbers all the way up to the value 7. 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. So eight rows are what we're going to need for three inputs because two to the third, remember each one of our inputs has two different variants, a zero or a one. And then it's to the third because we have three different inputs. So in this case, we have A that could take a zero or one, B could take a zero or one, or C could take a zero or one. So as you can see on the truth table that we've drawn, we have eight separate rows that describe all the different inputs that we can get here. And then Q, we're just going to create a fake circuit in this case. So don't worry about how I'm getting Q right now because the whole point of this is to take a true table or something like that and convert it into a circuit equation or a diagram. So in this case, we'll just say one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero. Okay, so now what I've done here is I've drawn a circuit using a true table. So we can see we have four ones. So remember, there are two different ways we can convert the circuit. The first way is sum of products, SOP. Now, if you think about what sum of products actually means, it means we calculate the products first and then we take a sum of all those products. Now, if you look back at the lecture notes, products means an AND gate. It's multiplication, an AND gate, whereas sum, the addition operator, is an OR gate. And so that's what we're going to look at when we look at sum of products. So there's a couple rules that we have to think about with sum of products. Number one, we're looking at where Q is equal to one. Okay, so those are the only rows we only care, we care about. If Q is equal to zero, we ignore those rows. It does not add a term into our circuit equation. So remember, the whole point of this is to draw a circuit equation. So you can see we have one row where Q is equal to one. We have two rows, three rows, and four rows. So really, these are the only four rows that we have to look for in SOP, sum of products format. Okay, so that is what we look for first, is where the output is going to be equal to one. Number two, what we're going to do is we're going to look at each one of the inputs. So we have inputs A, B, and C. And what we're going to do is we're going to write down AND gates in between inputs. So we're going to AND inputs together. Okay, so in this case, you can see that our inputs are going to be A, B, and C. So Q, we're going to have four terms, A, B, and C. And then we're going to combine, so three combined terms using OR gates. Okay, because of the order of operations, you can see we're going to get the products first and then we're gonna take the sum, hence sum of the products. So in this case, we have four different terms that we're gonna have ABC plus ABC plus ABC. Okay, so it's A times B times C. So essentially it's a three input AND gate where A, B, and C are our inputs. And then we OR all these together to form our circuit. Okay, and then step four is we're going to invert inputs that are one, uh, that are zero. Okay, so any input that is zero, we're going to invert it. So you can see in the first one, we have zero, zero, zero. So all three inputs are going to be inverted. Okay, the second one, you can see that A is the only thing that's zero. So we're going to invert A. Okay, and then the next one, B is the only one that's inverted, so we're going to invert B, I'm the only one that's zero. And then finally, C is the only thing inverted on the last term. And so you can see we've drawn a circuit equation. So if we look at this, remember we can think of OR gates as OR and AND. So in this case, the first term is if A is zero and B is zero and C is zero, then Q is equal to one. Okay, and you can actually look at that because if we have zero, and it was so essentially what this first term right here is going to look like, so we have a three input AND gate with three inverted inputs. So remember those are your inverter bubbles. And so A is going to be here, B is going to be here, C is going to be here, and this is the output Q. So the only way that this AND gate is going to produce a one is if A is zero, B is zero, C is zero. Remember an inverter, if we pass a zero through an inverter, it looks like a one to the AND gate. 
Okay, so that's the only way we can get all three ones in the AND gate. So that is one term, and we can look at it by saying, yep, yeah, A has to be zero, B has to be zero, and C has to be zero. That gives us an output of one. So that's one way we can get a one. So right here, this is a sum of products outputs. So number one, where the, you only look at the rows where Q is equal to one, or the output. In this case, Q is our output. Number two, you AND the inputs together. So as you go right to left, or left to right, as we go across the columns, as we look at one individual row and we go across the columns, we're going to AND our inputs together. As we move to the next row, we have to OR all these inputs together. There can't just be floating circuits sitting out there, so we have to do something to combine all these. Inputs get combined with AND gates, and terms, which are the combination of inputs, terms get com combined with OR gates. That's where PLUS comes from. So in this case, whenever we form a sum of products, we really are only using three logic components. We're using an inverter, we're using AND gates, and we're using OR gates. As you can see here, this final circuit equation is going to produce our result. So let's take a look at an example of how to do that. So let's say we had the input 100, zero, zero, this one right here. So let me change colors here. So let's say we had 100, zero, zero. so we're going to get 100, zero, zero, 100, zero, zero, 100, zero, zero, 100, zero, zero. okay? When we're done, we should get the output of zero. So let's see what happens. In this case, we're going to invert A, so the AND gate is going to see 0, 1, 1. Remember, an AND gate requires all three inputs to be 1, or all the inputs. For four input AND gates, it requires all four to be 1. For this case, we need three ones to get a 1. So that's going to be 0. So that's 0 or with, and this gives us 0, and it with 0, and with 0, which also gives us 0. This one gives us 1, and it with 1, and it with 0. So that's going to be 0. And the final one gives us 1, and it with 0. And it with one, so that's going to give us zero. So this whole equation now, if we substitute one for the input of a, zero for the input of b, and c is also zero, we're going to get the value zero. Okay, so let's substitute in something that will give us the value one. Okay, so let's take a look at this row right here, one zero one. Let's see what happens whenever we plug that in. So in this case, you can see that every single one of our terms produced the output of zero. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to see what happens whenever we produce the output of 1. To do that, we're going to substitute 1, 0, 1. So 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay, now A is inverted here, so it's going to be inverted to 0. B is inverted, so that'll be inverted to 1. C is inverted, so it gives us 0. Okay, remember the AND gate requires all three inputs be 1, so that's, that whole term is going to give us the value 0, so that doesn't help us. In this case, A gets inverted to 0, B is not inverted, so it's 0, and C is not inverted, so it's 1. In this case, once again, because you have a 0 inside of one of these inputs, the whole thing is 0. In this case, we have 1 is A, B gets inverted to 1, C gets inverted to 1. Okay? Uh-oh, we've got a 1 now. Okay? And then finally, the last one is 1, 0, 0. Okay? So we have, in this case, these, this is going to reduce into 0, plus 0, plus 1, plus 0. Remember, an OR gate, as long as there's a 1 somewhere in there, so this could be a 4-input OR gate, it looks something like this. Okay, and then we have 0 here, 0 here, 1 here, 0 here. So, of course, because there's a 1 inside of one of our terms, our output is also going to be 1. So you can see with the sum of products what is actually happening. Now, following the checklist, the four steps of the checklist, is the easiest way to figure out what you're doing but it doesn't tell you what's happening. It's just a way that you can convert this truth table into a circuit a equation form. So let's take a look at the other method, which is called products of sums. So if you think of sum of products, we got the products first, order of operations, and then we add them all together. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip that. So we wanna add our inputs, and then we wanna and our terms together. Remember, in sum of products, we anded our inputs together, and then we added, so we ORed all of our terms together. So remember, a term is just multiple inputs being combined, okay? So let's take a look at a different, well, actually, let's do this. So let's take the same circuit, but we're gonna have to change these, there we go, okay? So notice that the four steps are identical, it's just some terms are going to be replaced in here. So now what we're going to do is erase most of this. Okay, now we're going to look at products of sums. So POS form is products, so that's the AND gates, of the sums. 
So in this case, what we have to do first is the addition. So you'll see a lot of parentheses in the products of sums form. Okay. Now remember, in sum of products, we looked at where the output was 1. But essentially, we're going to use what's called De Morgan's Law to invert all this information. So remember, in De Morgan's Law, the way we do that is wherever we had an inversion, we take it away. Wherever there was an inversion, we add an inverter. And then we replace all OR gates with AND gates and all AND gates with OR gates. And essentially, that's what we're doing to come up with products of sums. It's going to give us the same result. It's just that the AND gates and the OR gates are going to be swapped. So instead of looking where we're, the output is 1, we're now going to look at where the output is 0. Okay? Then we're going to OR the inputs together, and then we're going to AND the terms. Remember, in sum of products, we ANDed the inputs and ORed the terms. We just inverted that. And now we're going to input, uh, invert inputs that are 1. So remember, in sum of products, we inverted the inputs where it was 0. So we still have Q equals, but now what we're going to have is four terms, once again, because we're looking at where the output is 0. In this case, we have 0. 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 Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop parentheses because of order of operations, a plus b plus c, and we're going to and that with a plus b plus c. And remember, we're going to have four terms. That's why we have four rows with where the output is zero. a plus b plus c, and finally a plus b plus c. Okay, so let's check back at our checklist. We looked at where q is equal to zero, so we see that. We or the inputs together. So if you can see what's inside the parentheses, we added the inputs together. That's our or gates. And then we combine the terms using and gates. I can put a little multiplication in between, but if we have two parentheses butted up against, it assumes the product, assumes multiplication. Now what we're going to do is we're going to invert the inputs that are 1. So let's take a look at the first row right here. We, we can see that A is 0, B is 0, C is 1. So we're going to invert C. Okay. Taking a look at the second row, we can see that A is 0, B is 1, C is 0. So we're going to invert B. We can see down here we have 1, 0, 0, so A needs to be inverted. And then finally, for the last row, we need to invert all three inputs. Okay? And so that is what it looks like in the sum of products. So let's take a look at this. Let's go back. So remember, we had 1, 0, 1, and that's going to give us the value, the output of 1. So let's go and substitute this in here to see that, yes, regardless of if we do it in products to sums or sum of products, we're going to get the same result. It's just two different ways we can do the same thing. So in this case, once again, we want to do 1, 0, 1. So we have a 1. For A, 0 for B, 1 for C, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay, now we need to apply the inverters. So in this case, we have 1 plus 0 plus, and then C gets inverted to 0. Okay, in this case, we have 1 plus 1 plus 1. So remember, these are all anded together, so they all have to have a 1 in there. So this A goes to 0 plus 0 plus 1, so that's going to be 1. And then finally, we invert the A, which gives us 0. We invert the B, which gives us 1. We invert the C, which gives us 0. So in this case, we have 1, anded with 1, anded with 1, anded with 1. Okay, the only way our outputs can give us a 1 is if every single term has something that's 1. So in this case, our output is 1, just like this row tells us it's going to be. Okay, so let's try one where our output is going to be 0. Okay, now whenever we look at our output is 0, let's take the last one here where we have 1, 1, 1. So A is 1, B is 1, C is 1. A is 1, B is 1, C is 1. A is 1, B is 1, C is 1. A is 1, B is 1, C is 1. Okay, so now we apply the inversion. In this case, we're going to have 1 ORed with 1 ORed with 0. Okay, so that's the first term. Second term is going to be 1 ORed with 0. Then the, la the next one we're going to have 0 ORed with 1 ORed with 1. And then the last term, we're going to have 0, ORD with 0, ORD with 0. Okay? So notice we have 1, ANDed with 1, ANDed with 1, ANDed with 0. So in this case, our whole thing is going to go to 0. As long as there's 1, 0 somewhere in the AND gate, we get a 0. So notice our output is 0. So to recap, for sum of products, we are adding all of the products. So our inputs are combined with AND gates. Our terms, which are the combination of inputs, are added together using OR gates, and finally we invert where the input is zero. For products of sums that we see here, we look at where the output is zero. So it's the opposite of the way we do sum of products. We OR the inputs together, so that's the plus, and then we combine the terms using AND gates, and then we invert wherever the input is the value one. So that's products of sums and sums of product. Generally, you're going to use this to take a truth table and make it into a circuit equation. Now we can take the circuit equation and we can draw a diagram off of it. 
So for example, in this case, we can look at this circuit equation. We can see that we just need one AND gate that's going to have four different terms and that's going to provide Q. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have four different OR gates that take three inputs. So here's our first OR gate, second OR gate, third OR gate, fourth OR gate. Okay? And so remember what we have to do is we have to invert the third term, so C on the first one. We have to invert B on the second one, so that's the middle term. We invert A, which is the top term, and then we invert all three on the last one. So our tops are all going to be A's, our middles are all going to be B's, and our final one is all going to be C's. So I'm not going to do that because it's going to get messy, but we can combine all these wires to produce something that looks like that. Okay? And so converting it into a circuit diagram is kind of you just follow whatever the equation is telling you. However, getting it into a truth table into the circuit equation might be the harder part, and that's why we use products of sums or sums of product. You'll also see this again whenever we look at Karnoff maps, and that'll be a different video or whenever we talk about Boolean algebra. So that's sum of products and products of sum in digital logic. Thanks for watching.